In his groundbreaking book, Lost Connections, author and journalist Johan Hari powerfully argues that most of what we believe about depression and how to treat it is wrong. In this video, we'll go over the most important insights the book uncovers and the lessons we can apply in our lives. Most people understand that a chemical imbalance within the brain causes depression, but what if this is wrong? Or at least the story of this is incomplete. Hari thinks that most depression isn't caused by a chemical imbalance. Instead, he claims there are several main causes of depression, many you probably haven't thought about, so let's look at a few of them today. The first cause we'll look at is the disconnection from status and respect. Baboons are our primate cousins. They live in societies where everyone knows who's on top and who's at the bottom. And those right at the bottom get teased, bullied, and attacked by everyone else. They look a lot like depressed humans, keeping their heads down, acting submissive, and lacking energy. Human societies are more complicated, but not that different. We live in some of the most unequal societies ever, and we're constantly being reminded how poor, ugly, and uncool we are by advertising, reality TV, and social media. When we feel like we're at the bottom of the pile, we struggle to find the energy and self-esteem to thrive in life. And studies show that the more unequal the society, the more depressed it is. The second cause we have is the disconnection from the natural world. A study from 2016 found that we spend almost 90% of our lives inside. But humans evolved in natural environments around trees, mountains, water, and other animals so it's no surprise that there's a strong connection between depression and living in greener areas. Studies tracking people's mental health as they move from the city to the country found that these people get a big mental health boost. And the reverse also happens. People moving from greener areas to the city see their depression risk rise. Spending time in nature gets our bodies moving and gets us out of our heads and contributes to a sense of awe that puts our individual problems in perspective. Hari doesn't deny that the story about how biological factors are involved in depression holds some truth, but their role isn't as significant as we tend to believe. Often, they're deeply connected to the other factors we've just looked at. The next cause we have is the disconnection from meaningful values. For thousands of years, philosophers have said that if you place too much importance on status, showing off, and money and possessions, you will be unhappy. Yet, everything from advertising to pop music in society today teaches that money, status, and owning things are the route to a good life. But we're slowly learning more about how these benefits contribute to depression. Hari outlines several studies conducted in the U.S. on people of all ages, showing that the more materialistic someone's values, the more likely they are to be depressed and anxious. And finally, we have the last cause, disconnection from childhood trauma. This one's a little different. When you see a burning building, you first notice the smoke, so it would be easy to think that the smoke was the problem and focus only on getting rid of it. But we know the smoke is just a symptom. The real issue is the fire. For many people, depression and anxiety might be the smoke and childhood trauma is the fire. By treating the symptoms only and not processing the trauma, we're not getting to the root cause. Studies confirm that the more traumatic events someone experiences as a child, the more likely they are to develop depression as an adult. So, what does Lost Connections say we should do to combat these causes? Hari gives us solutions, and we'll turn to a few of them after we discuss today's sponsor, Blinkist. Blinkist is a platform that will help you expand your knowledge and speed up your personal growth. They provide insights from a curated selection of over 6,600 nonfiction bestsellers spanning across 27 diverse categories. Each title is distilled in concise 15-minute snippets. Available in both readable and audible formats. With Blinkist, you can absorb the wisdom of an entire book without having to spend hours and hours of your valuable time. We were able to quickly learn a lot about many interesting topics, and this is even how we came across the book Lost Connections. And you can read it on Blinkist right now, too. Blinkist even has a brand new feature called Blinkist Spaces. This feature allows you to create a space with friends or family where you can recommend titles to each other. All members of a shared space can access all titles in the space with or without a Blinkist Premium subscription. You can start your 7-day free trial and get 25% off Blinkist Premium by clicking on the link in the description box below. Thanks Blinkist for sponsoring this video. So, let's look into the solutions. The first solution is to reconnect to meaningful values. We should try to stay away from advertising, reality TV, and other things that promote what Hari calls junk values. Values that encourage us to care about things that don't truly make us happy. Hari also recommends thinking of talking more, as a society, about the values that do actually motivate us deep down, often called intrinsic values. 
so that we're less likely to fall into the trap of living by junk values. The next solution we'll look at today is sympathetic joy. Sympathetic joy is something we can cultivate through loving-kindness meditation. This involves imagining something good happening to you and feeling the joy of it, then imagining the same for someone you're close to and again feeling joy, and finally doing the same for someone you don't like. Studies show that loving-kindness meditation makes us more likely to help others when given the opportunity, which gets us out of our heads and encourages social connection, and it's just one form of meditation. Many others, including some we've looked at on the channel, have been shown to reduce depression and anxiety. The next solution is social prescribing. Instead of focusing only on medication, doctors should encourage us to join clubs and do activities that help us become part of our communities and give us a sense of purpose. Hari gives the example of a woman with depression assigned to join a gardening group, which helped her build connections and drew her attention away from the challenges she was dealing with. The final solution is acknowledging and overcoming childhood trauma. By openly recognizing childhood trauma, we stand a better chance of overcoming the depression it causes. Hari shares a study conducted in the U.S. where doctors asked patients about any traumatic childhood experiences they'd had in a compassionate, non-judgmental way. For some, this was the first time they'd spoken about them. It found that in the months and years that followed, the patients who acknowledged and talked about their trauma showed a significant reduction in depression and anxiety. They were 35% less likely to return for help or ask for medication. So there you have it, a different way to think about depression and what to do about it from Johan Hari's Lost Connections. I hope you found this valuable. Read the book today on Blinkist or check out our other videos on depression to learn more. Besides that, stay tuned.